It turned into quite a season for the men's basketball team. Not only did they reach the semifinals of the NIT, guard Tyler Haas had a school record with 780 points, the most by a sophomore in BYU history. And head coach Dave Rose also improved on his 209 career wins, the second most in school history. We welcome both back to True Blue. It's good to have you here. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Coach, in what ways did you see Tyler get better over the course of that season? Well, he, he started off so well, it was, it's hard to uh, imagine that he could get better. But the key for him was how consistent he was all year long. And I think that um, he went through a little stretch there in the middle of the year where, you know, he felt like, like he had, you know, had, you could feel that he'd just come home off his mission. And once he got through, but he still was really consistent during that time. And um, I think that uh, late in the year, uh, his ability to just uh, score big baskets for us in big situations um, and as consistent as he was, it's uh, uh, it's amazing when you think all the sophomores that have played here, he scored more points than any of them. And there have been some great ones, including Danny Ainge. Uh, Tyler, what ways did you sense that Coach Rose became a better coach over the course of the season? Um, you know, I think this season was uh, a different season, uh, different players, and um, we went through some ups and downs. and. Um, different lineups and uh, but I think one big thing with Coach Rose is he's a winner and he's always driven to just um, get the job done and, and get the win and and so we, we found ways to win um, with different lineups and different different people and different circumstances and um, I'm happy with the way it ended. <laughs> Well, as a credit to you and, and what you did after the San Diego loss in Las Vegas, in, in a matter of three or four weeks, this team ends the season flying high. What did you sense? What did you tweak? What, what happened? Well, I, I think it's the, the, the players. I mean, the, the, the disappointment that we experienced when we uh, were beating the, the quarterfinals of the WCC tournament, and then guys had to decide how we're going to respond to this and what are we going to do. And, he just got back and got to work, and then we hoped for three or four, five days, six days that we would get another game. And when we got into the NIT and uh, we're playing Washington, and I think it gave our guys a lot of energy, a lot of life. And then they really performed well uh, in that game against Washington, especially the second half. Um, uh, and then the Mercer team was extremely uh, competitive and very, very talented. I mean, it was a really good team. And, uh, it, it, that that didn't have the kind of the pop to it as far as the name was concerned, right. but our guys played great t uh, game again, and and I, I just give all the credit to our coaches and to the players for responding in a tough spot uh, the way you'd want your your guys to respond. What did you learn about yourself in first year after your mission, getting back to this high level of basketball, despite how well you played? What did you learn? Um, you know, I learned I learned a few things. Uh, one is to to just bring it every single night. Uh, you know, every guy is important on the team, and uh, you need to need to bring it every single night. And um, I felt like most of our guys were, uh, you know, pretty consistent. And uh, hopefully, we can can continue to build on this year. As you look to the future now, I, I think that the NIT probably meant more for Matt Carlino and Nate Austin in how they performed in in building what you have coming back next year. Yeah, and, and I always look at it a different way. I, I think Brock Zielstra and Craig Cusick and Brandon right. Davies, that, that tournament is so great for those guys because uh, they'll get to, uh, that, that experience that we had in New York in the Final Four of the NIT was something they'll be able to remember for the, the rest of their life and have great memories of their time here. And, and for us moving forward, I think that uh, we played a lot of younger guys and they had uh, got some good experience. But what I think we're really excited about is we're returning for the first time in three years, uh, our most consistent offensive player. Right. I, we lost Jimmer that year, and we lost Noah the year before. And now we've got Tyler, and Tyler's returning. And then we're returning Kyle Collinsworth off his mission with uh, the experience of uh, the minutes that he played on the team that's won more games in the history of the school. So those are real positive things that we can look forward to. And, and hopefully our new guys coming in will get ready, get, get there uh, as soon as possible. In, uh, and, and, and the guys returning will, will uh, be able to expand their game. Taking a look at him here with uh, there's Collinsworth and then we saw Luke Worthington a moment ago and Eric Meek are the two big guys as you try to replace what what Brandon did you'll look to some young guys. Yeah we will and I think that uh, 
the key for us, I think that we can be consistent offensively. I think we've got the pieces in place. Defensively, we need to get better. We need to get a lot better defensively. We need to be able to be more diverse. Uh, you know, our zone was kind of our primary defense. We need to get back to where man-to-man uh, -man becomes our primary defense. We can do some other things with our secondary defense. But uh, defensively, will be a real focus for us during the offseason. Tyler, you came back with some fire from your mission of you wanted to be in game shape uh, from the opening tip. Well, now here comes your second summer. Uh, how do you approach it? Do you approach it the same way or is it a little bit different? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, last summer I had to be careful. I didn't want to do too much too soon. Um, but I'm ready to hit the ground running and um, I feel like I have a good game plan and good offseason goals and um, ready to go. We talk about Jimmer Fredette and we always will. Um, when we look at his 2,500 plus points, uh, but when we look at this guy and where he sits after two years, separated by a two year mission, what, what's the potential for Tyler? Well, I, I think the, the potential is kind of, it's, it's off the charts, you know, as far as it, you know, Ty's work ethic is um, just superior uh, to so many other guys. And I think that uh, what we'd like him to do uh, this off season is to actually, um, you know, continue to work on his own game and, uh, you know, to, to get better, but to also help some of the other players and, and maybe some of their commitment and their work ethic and their, uh, um, you know, their passion for, uh, their preparation. We all have passion to play. All right. of our guys got passion to play. But that passion to prepare is a real key. And I think, uh, you know, Tyler can really help some of our guys with that. All right. Have a great summer. All right. We're looking Coach, forward to thanks. it. Thanks. You, good luck with finals this week. Thanks, Dave. I'm going to need it. Tyler Haas. <laughs>